All right, so welcome to our second video, I guess I call it video B of this chapter five series. We're going to talk about different types of reactions. Um, actually, we'll, we'll probably only get to uh, single displacement. We'll get through these briefly, but I'll only go into detail um, essentially about one of them right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by looking at combination reactions. A combination reaction is when you have um, at least one, at least, uh, excuse me, two components that combine and make something else. Oftentimes this is called a synthesis reaction reaction because you're making something new. Uh, an example of this would be, for example, if you took sodium and chlorine gas, let's go ahead and balance this, and you formed sodium chloride. And you'd make two of these. And we've kind of discussed this in, ter in, in class in terms of here we've got sodium, this explodes in water. Here we've got chlorine, this will kill you, you don't want to breathe it in. You mix them together and you get something delicious, table salt. So you took two totally different things and you combined them into something else that, that is now uh, has totally different chemical properties. All right, a decomposition reaction would be kind of, kind of the opposite. An example of this would be, for example, if we took... Um, H2O2, if you leave hydrogen peroxide in your cabinet for too long, it'll actually start breaking down into water and oxygen gas. And we'll just use a half there to balance it out quickly. So, um, uh, so let me actually write that in terms of, of what we did up here. There'd be some XY going down to X plus Y. So kind of the opposite of a combination reaction would be a decomposition reaction. That could also be called a uh, decombination reaction or desynthesis reaction. There's lots of different terms, but the overall principle is the same. You've got something and you break it down into two other things. I think you'll agree that, that H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, is very different from water and oxygen. Uh, then we have a single displacement reaction where we'll be sending, uh, spending a lot of time. So a single displacement reaction would be something like we have some X y plus z and single displacement means one single thing is going to be displaced and in this case it's going to, usually going to be uh, the anion is kind of the way to think about it so if we have some kind of ionic compound we have a, a cation and an anion bound together we react it with something else and this anion is actually going to move over here so we'll end up with an x plus y z now there's multiple um multiple examples of this one of them might be, I'm, I'm looking at a table right now, one of them might be like iron nitrate. So iron two nitrate reacting with, let's say, lithium. And to balance it out, we need two lithiums and that will form uh, lithium nitrate and Iron. So essentially the nitrate just moved over to the lithium and that's what we ended up getting. Now a double displacement, we'll spend a lot more time here in another video. In fact, I think I have two more videos left that I'd like to make, but our next one is going to be a double displacement reaction. Here's where we have some kind of X, um, Y plus let's say Z, A. And remember in a single displacement, we had one thing move over, but here we've got a double displacement. So essentially we're going to have two things switch places. So this will form some kind of X A plus Z Y and that's double displacement. There are lots of examples of double displacement reactions. I can come up with a few. Let me think of one right now. Let's say we've got um, copper two chloride. So our X would be copper, our Y would be chloride, two, two chlorides together. And let's do lead nitrate, kind of a big old standby, lead 2 nitrate, so copper 2 chloride and lead 2 nitrate, what that's going to form is copper 2 nitrate and lead 2 chloride. Now it's a little more difficult to see when we start to balance these reactions and we have to look at subscripts, etc. Probably a better way to do it is something that we did in the last video. We actually wrote it out. We said, all right, let's say you've got copper two chloride plus lead two nitrate 
And we said anytime you have two ionic compounds, the anions are just gonna switch. So if we switch these around, it was copper two chloride and lead to nitrate. Now it's gonna be copper two nitrate and lead to chloride. So copper two nitrate and lead to chloride. When you write what those compounds are, you get the ones that are written above. So it helps a lot to when you're getting started to write them out. Otherwise, you get thrown off with numbers, etc. It's a lot to take in. So I suggest writing out the whole word, figuring out what's switching, and then saying, okay, what is copper 2 chloride? Oh, copper 2 chloride is CuCl2. And if you don't know that, then you're going to have to go back to chapter 4 and really understand nomenclature. All right, so that's double displacement. Here is where we're going to spend the most of our time today in single displacement town. Um, and I think I start you off with this beautiful table over here. Now, this table is called an activity series table um, or table of reactivity. There's lots of different names for it, uh, but the overall principle is the same no matter which table that you're looking at. Um, you'll see a lot of different um, stuff written oftentimes, different ions, you might even see some a table like this with electrons on it, etc. The principle is the same. Are y'all ready for this? If it's up top, it wants a buddy. It wants a buddy the most. It's a really important principle to understand that anything up here wants a buddy. It doesn't like to be alone. It's less stable as itself, and it wants a buddy, meaning it wants to form an ionic compound. Um, Pretty much that's that's it until we get to, to halogens in certain situations. So let's go ahead and use this information that the higher something is on a list, the more it wants a buddy, and see if we can figure out how that's going to play out in an actual example. Okay, so I ask, will the following reactions occur? And if so, what are the products? So I wrote them out so we can get really used to A, nomenclature, and B, um, figuring out products really easily. So iron is Fe. It's talking about regular iron. It's not a charged iron or anything like that. And it's reacting with copper 2 nitrate. Copper 2 is Cu2+. plus. So we would need two nitrates. Each nitrate is NO3 negative to make copper 2 nitrate. And the question is, will it occur? And if so, what are the products? Well, the question of will it occur comes down to this table. So let's go ahead and look at this table. We know um, that iron is right here and copper is down here. So who wants a buddy more, iron or copper? Iron wants a buddy more, right? It's higher on the list, so iron wants a buddy. Now let's move over here. Does iron currently have a buddy? The answer is no, it's all alone, right? So therefore the reaction will occur. Again, this guy wants a buddy more. So it will occur. Now what will occur? Well, just like writing out the products, uh, the reactants and products helped in the last problem, the same thing happens here. Here we had iron and copper two nitrate. Essentially this nitrate is going to move over here. So we're get, going to get iron nitrate now. I kind of did you a disservice because iron can form into iron 2 or iron 3, and you generally don't exactly know what's going to happen. Um, but if it's copper 2, let's just go ahead and assume it's going to form iron 2 over here just to make our lives easier. So this would form iron 2 nitrate, which would be FeNO3, 2, and copper. So the question is, will it occur? The answer is yes, because iron was higher on the list. It wanted a buddy. Here it was alone. Now it's got a buddy. It's super duper happy iron. Um, no rusting or anything. And then over here we've got copper. Uh, it wanted a buddy less, so it was okay with giving up that nitrate. It's a little more stable on its own than iron was. All right, let's move on to the next one. Sodium and hydrochloric acid. Now, of course, we know this is hydrochloric acid, so this would have to be an aqueous solution. Sodium is solid, so the things that are alone uh, you have to spend some time thinking about this. 
Over here, you have sodium. Sodium is metal. Metals are cations, right? And when, when they form reactions, the metals like to give off electrons. Metals are positive. So the thing that we're comparing it with is this hydrogen over here, which would also be a cation. So we're comparing sodium and hydrogen to see if this chloride will move around. So let's go to this table. Let's look for hydrogen. I see hydrogen right here. I see sodium way up here. It's actually a little overestimated, I believe, on this table. Way up here. So who wants a buddy more, hydrogen or sodium? And hopefully your answer is a resounding sodium. It's pretty high on the list. And so this reaction will occur. You're going to get sodium chloride. Again, that chlorine is going to move over here. Going to be, or this chloride, excuse me, is going to move over here to make sodium chloride. And you're left with hydrogen. But it, does hydrogen hang out on its own? No, it's a diatomic. So we're actually talking about H2. So then you'd have to go through and balance this reaction. You need two HCl, you need two of those, and you actually need two of those as well. And I believe the reaction should now be balanced. So this reaction would occur, and this would be, um, these would be their products. Let's look at aluminum nitrate. Aluminum nitrate is AlNO3, because aluminum has got a three plus charge, and copper two chloride, CuCl2. This is a total mistake because these are both ionic compounds and this would be what kind of reaction? Double displacement. Because we have two ionic compounds. Maybe I purposely put this in here because this is something that would come up on an exam and you'd say, hey, this thing would occur because of blah, 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 when really the answer is it's a double displacement reaction, it's not going to occur. So, right, well, it will occur, but this, it's not going to be this. Okay, so first double displacement reactions, we don't look at the table at all. You only look at the table for single displacement reactions. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's just make something up. Let's say we've got aluminum and copper two chloride. And you want to see if it's going to occur? Well, here we'd be looking at aluminum and the copper. So let's go over here at our table. Aluminum's right here. Copper's right here. So what's higher on the list, aluminum or copper? Hopefully you said aluminum. Aluminum wants a buddy more. Does aluminum currently have a buddy? It, it, it doesn't, so it wants one. So this reaction would occur, and you'd get aluminum chloride and um, copper, just standard copper. Now you'd want to go ahead and balance this. We need three of those, two of those, two of those, and three of those. Um, however, again, the main point is understanding that it will actually occur. All right, now we have zinc chloride and fluorine. Zinc chloride, we know zinc's got a two plus charge, so zinc chloride would be ZnCl2, and fluorine, which, is a diatomic, so it would be F2. All right, in this situation, now we ought to pause and think, and, and maybe something stands out to you, that before we were looking at things that were cations, so aluminum was a cation, copper is a cation, so sodium, uh, this hydrogen ion, iron and copper, these are all cations. And all of a sudden we're down here and we don't have a cation anymore. We're not looking at positively charged things because we have zinc chloride and another halogen. Well, that's okay because this table also has halogens. And you should note that in the periodic table, the, the exact order is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Um, way, a way that somebody, one of my students taught me to remember this is freaking Claire brought ice. I don't know why, but she's pretty mad at Claire and for bringing some ice. So that's a good way to help you remember the, the order that these are in. All right, so freaking Claire brought ice. Now we can look at the halogens. So it's the exact same principle, higher on the list, wants a buddy. So what's higher on the list, chlorine or fluorine? The, the freaking part of this is higher on the list. This is higher, and therefore this reaction will occur because right now fluorine doesn't have a buddy. Fluorine's paired with itself, we're all alone. So it wants a buddy. So this reaction will occur and you'll get zinc 
fluoride, and chlorine gas. Let's do an example um, where it wouldn't occur. So let's go ahead and say we've got um, one more. Um, I don't know why I just grabbed zinc, but let's say zinc iodide. And cobalt. So zinc iodide plus cobalt. And I wanna know if this reaction is going to occur. When we go over here, we're looking at zinc and cobalt. Zinc is higher on the list than cobalt is. So zinc wants a buddy more. Does zinc already have a buddy? It does, and therefore this reaction would not spontaneously occur. All right. I think I have a few more random examples for you. We can finish these up. Here we have zinc fluoride and bromine. Zinc fluoride, ZNF2, and bromine is a diatomic. It's a liquid, it'd be Br2. And so freaking Claire brought ice, what's higher on the list? Fluorine's higher on the list. Uh, fluorine already has a buddy, right? So will this reaction even occur? It won't occur already has buddy it's already super happy all right now sodium iodide and chloride and a i and excuse me not chloride chlorine which is again is a diatomic and the question is um will the chlorine and the iodine switch places what's higher on the list iodine or chlorine well freaking claire brought ice this one's higher this one wants a buddy Again, because chlorine is higher than iodine, chlorine wants a buddy more. So this reaction will occur and you'll get sodium chloride and iodine, which is also a diatomic, so you'd wanna balance this reaction. And that is it so far for this video. I'm going to post another one shortly uh, regarding more single displacement reactions and redox reactions. Bye-bye.